the GFCC collects case studies from its members around the world to publish annual best practices and competitiveness strategy. Today, you will hear presentations from Saudi Arabia and the United Arab of Emirates. First, Dr. Hatim Samman will join us again to moderate this, discuss this discussion. And the case presenters are Mr. Khaldun Mahasan, Investment Policy and Regulation Advisor at Sagia, Mr. Shahina Muhammad, Special Advisor at Emirates Competitiveness Council, Mr. Um, Ms. Amna, sorry, Ms. Amna Al Abdullah, Associate Project Manager at Emirates Competitiveness Council. <laughs> Okay, can everybody hear me? Okay, so this session is on GFCC cases. Uh, it's two parts. We're gonna start with something uh, called the CAP, the Competitive, Competitiveness Acceleration Program, which is a program that we started uh, about a year ago at uh, Sagia. Uh, the objective of this 3D program is to uh, materialize the studies that we've had on uh, the uh, business environment in Saudi Arabia. Uh, we've did a study uh, to corroborate or to investigate, if you like, the uh, reports that we have seen from the World Economic Forum and reports from the uh, World Bank. And uh, the point uh, of this uh, program is not only to investigate that, but also to pursue uh, objectives that will actually uh, put the, this study into effect in the sense that we benchmark our, uh, the different factors that uh, help us improve the environment. Um, I would start, and then we will, before you start, Khaldun. Khaldun Mahasan, my colleague, will present uh, this case study. The next one is on the UAE and the progress of the UAE over the past decade. Uh, they talk about the different phases of the progress, the uh, factor-driven uh, uh, phase, the efficiency-driven phase, and the innovation-driven uh, phase. And that will be presented by our colleagues, uh, Ms. Amna Al-Abdullah and uh, Ms. Shaheen. Uh, so, uh, can you start, please? Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it gives me great pleasure uh, to speak to you today about uh, our program, Competitiveness uh, Acceleration pro Program that we call the CAP. It's not showing on the board. I, sh I think I should do something here. No? I shouldn't? OK. Uh, it comes, OK, automatically. Good. Uh, so, uh, we will be, uh, uh, I will uh, take you uh, through this, uh, our, our process on how did we arrive to uh, uh, the outcome of this program and uh, what's the methodology behind it, what's the ideas behind it, and how did we get uh, finally uh, uh, to, um, uh, to design this program. And, uh, of course, our, our target is, is to uh, put Saudi Arabia investment environment uh, in the uh, top, among the uh, top uh, uh, in uh, globally. So I'll be talking about, I'll be talking about uh, why, do, why do we need it, what, uh, what's, um, uh, how, how this is program is tied to our economic uh, goals uh, as a country. Uh, I'll talk about a little bit about also uh, the current uh, competitiveness of Saudi Arabia um, uh, and uh, the uh, research that we did, the outcome, the results of this research. And also uh, the last part is about our design of, of this program and how did we uh, go about it? So Saudi Arabia have received a, a lot of investments or the investment growth was enormous in the past decade, the 10, 
uh, in the last 10 years. And uh, however, the private sector growth, the private sector growth uh, did, did was not uh, as much as we hope to be, a little bit less. It, it is a good uh, growth, 7.7%, uh, but this is uh, also an issue that we wanted to address. Uh, also, the impact of these investments, the impact of these investments in terms of uh, job uh, creation, in terms of effect on GDP. We made some comparison here with um, uh, European Union countries, and we found out that um, investments in Saudi Arabia generates about half of uh, jobs that is generated by uh, the average of the average of. Uh, economies of uh, uh, um, uh, European Union. Also, the GDP multiplier is half of uh, the European, uh, 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 an average of European uh, uh, Union economy. So this is another issue also that we wanted to uh, address. How, how are we going to address that? Um, by uh, working on investment environment, this is a, uh, the, this will lay the, uh, play, uh, the the ground to attract more investments from government, from private sector, from uh, uh, foreign investors, and this will, of course, generate growth or lead growth and diversification, create more jobs and uh, foster innovation. Many countries have done uh, similar exercises, similar programs. Uh, uh, they also, they were uh, uh, started uh, maybe by different reasons, different reasons for, for each country. Uh, for example, United Kingdom, uh, from the year 2005 until to the year 2015, uh, 2010, uh, has cut down the cost of uh, administrative or uh, cost, administrative court, or, or um, uh, what we call uh, regulatory burden cost by 25%. Also, Portugal have done a program to reduce the time or the cost to do uh, to start a business. To uh, and this, they were able to reduce starting a business time from 78 days to seven days. So these are also some examples that we, we looked at and we, we, uh, we studied uh, to, to, to find our similarities and to find out the outcomes of these uh, programs to help us in the design of ours. Uh, these are the, um, um, uh, what, what we are doing here in this program is to address the microeconomic competitiveness which is the quality uh, of, of the business environment and the state of cluster and industry development and the sophistication of the private sector uh, and uh, strategy. Hmm. How come this is? So this is, this is our approach. We have been, first we have, uh, I, I cannot move, okay. We have uh, identified the issues we have identified the issues through uh, um, research um, from uh, focus groups uh, for, um, uh, by investors, from investors. Uh, these, uh, these uh, maybe about m more than uh, 500 investors were, um, were contacted or were, uh, we asked them to, to give their feedback on, on the investment environment of Saudi Arabia and also uh, from uh, the uh, reports, the international reports, the indicators, global indicators of competitiveness. Uh, all this was, was gathered, then prioritized and diagnosed. And we, uh, for, for, uh, for the, uh, the outcome was an, an, um, an action plan, to develop an action plan. So the outcome or the, the uh, feedback we got from uh, the uh, private sector, from the business, was put into a, a frame, a framework that, uh, that we think that comprehends all, all these issues that we gather. 
Uh, this is the framework that uh, we have designed. Markets, policy and regulations, workforce issues, and other enabling factors such as education, innovation, infrastructure. Um, we have, we tapped into uh, over 24 competitiveness uh, ranking related reports. And uh, we, we gather about 183 uh, issues from the uh, business uh, community and uh, to come up with uh, about 208 factors or uh, indicators that we focus on uh, in our uh, program and, uh, to, de and uh, to develop our action plan. So we believe this framework provides a comprehensive uh, picture of uh, the, uh, our, uh, the business environment in Saudi Arabia. It, it captures all the major parts or the issues that, uh, uh, that will uh, affect the business. We, uh, I believe this, is, this uh, these kind of, uh, this uh, framework is, uh, might be uh, a little bit tailored to, uh, to Saudi Arabia, maybe other countries will have different uh, frameworks, but we believe these, these four issues or these four pillars are the four pillars that uh, from our research uh, and from our um, uh, focus groups with the, with the business community, we found out these, these are the major issues that affect the business, uh, business people in, in Saudi Arabia. Now I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about the outcome, maybe uh, in detail. Uh, I will give examples. I will not go through all, all the items. Um, this is the uh, market, the market pillar. Uh, so investors will, will, will be asking questions such as uh, how stable or how large is, is the market of the country I'm, I'm, I'm going into, uh, investing into. Uh, how's the tax uh, regime, tax uh, regulations uh, are? Uh, is it easy to transfer money? How are the regulations around uh, access of money and uh, withdrawal of money? Uh, am I able to import? How is the access through um, uh, import and export? Uh, um, uh, uh, access of goods? Uh, into the uh, uh, into and out of of the country, and also uh, access uh, through uh, establishing a, a business in terms of uh, procedures and processes. Also, how sophisticated is, is this market? Are there uh, are there barriers on, on sector levels uh, or regulations? So these kind of questions we were asked to the investors, and we found out some feedback on. Uh, what are the challenges in terms of licenses, uh, government procurement, uh, and other issues? Uh, we put five worst areas. What are the uh, five best areas? We found out, uh, um, um, and how 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 much uh, business people agree with with each of of these uh, areas. Uh, our our method was to try to capture not only um, the challenge, but also uh, how, how important is it to the investor. Is it a big, so you, the investor might say this is a challenge, but it might be not a priority for him. What might be, it might not be what we call a pain point for him. It's not uh, as important as other stuff. So we were also, um, uh, interested in how much is this uh, a pain point or a, a problem for the investor. And this is uh, the, uh, the priority of, of uh, uh, later on we will show how we, uh, we uh, put this in a graph to find, to prioritize our, uh, the, the goals or the items that we work on in this program. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, another issue uh, that we uh, did is we, uh, we made a breakdown of the outcome of the study in terms of Saudi foreign, small, medium, or large, 
uh, investor and also on manufacturing services. So each, each sector or, uh, or size of company will also face different kind of uh, barriers and they will, they will maybe uh, find it difficult or some challenges uh, for, for each group will be a little bit different in terms of, uh, of size or in terms of uh, priority or even sometimes it will not be a challenge for, for some sectors uh, or some groups and uh, it might be a challenge for others. So also we made this breakdown to find out uh, for each group of these investors, what are the pain points, what are the, um, the challenges, and how important are these uh, for each group. So this is an outcome of, of the issues in terms of um, Saudi or foreign mm -hmm. investor, in terms of services uh, or manufacturing sectors and also uh, in terms of small and, and large. Some of the groups that we found out are similar, we group together, but for gathering information, we make sure that we capture all this information and then later on we group them to, to, uh, to, be, uh, to have more insight on, on how um, each group of these businesses look at uh, uh, the investment environment in Saudi Arabia. <coughs> So uh, again, this is an example of a priority issue for Saudi manufacturers. Uh, what are the main challenges? Uh, uh, how strong is it? How do you strong, uh, strong agree uh, as is it a, a problem or not? Uh, in terms of uh, um, um, uh, trading uh, across border or market access, uh, overall stability of economy, quality of local suppliers. So these are the issues in, 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 in order. <coughs> and this is for, for surfaces. So we find out that there are uh, different uh, issues for, 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 for uh, services than for manufacturing. For example, the um, uh, trade across border is not an issue anymore here. Uh, maybe obtaining visas uh, for foreign partners here is, is a more uh, an issue of, uh, for, for the services than for the manufacturing sector. How am I doing on, on time? <laughs> okay, so these are, these are examples of, of different areas. Okay, let me uh, continue on our methodology. So uh, this is, this is uh, what we found out from, uh, uh, from the, uh, our, our study, and also we incorporate weak performance areas from international rankings, such as uh, global competitiveness report of the WEF and uh, the doing business uh, report, and uh, to come up with, with to come up with action, an action plan. Also, we mapped out uh, pri uh, the priorities according to the investors. What are the most uh, important issues for them? And this is uh, what we used. Uh, to start with the areas or the issues that we use to start with. Uh, so on the left side, the investor important, uh, um, uh, 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 how, how important is it for investors? And uh, the, the x-axis is about uh, the ranking uh, improvement potential. So we, would, we wanted to, to start with uh, things that have a large impact on the investors and also a large impact on um, on rankings. Uh, rankings also help in, in, uh, in providing more um, uh, in, in communicating uh, the investment environment of Saudi Arabia better. So we wanted to, to do both and focus on areas or issues that will help improve both the rankings and the uh, actual experience of the investor on ground. 
Finally, finally so, uh, after we come up with, with uh, these uh, plans and issues, we wanted to also uh, uh, have all government uh, uh, agencies on board on this program. So we, uh, we actually did eight task forces, eight teams, and uh, including about 55 uh, government agencies, uh, private sector, and uh, semi-government uh, agencies. All of them are represented in this team according to their specialty or their uh, uh, relevance. Uh, these teams have have been uh, have have worked together, uh, discussing all these issues regarding each each of uh, of, uh, of of the team, and to um, come up with uh, discuss also the action plan that Saga has done, made some improvement, made some comments, and come up come up with uh, comprehensive re recommendations that are all uh, agree on. So this is the stage we are now on. And the way forward is to start the implementation phase of these recommendations and to communicate. And this will include, of course, a PMO uh, um, office that will uh, help uh, monitor uh, progress and report progress. We have to communicate uh, the communication plan and communicate uh, progress and uh, updating this action plan annually uh, to capture all other issues and to see where we are uh, in the future. So this is our program. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Perhaps I should ask the question and then you can go up uh, to the podium and uh, do your presentation. Does that, that work? Yes, thank okay. you. Khaldun, uh, one of the things that I really um, foresee as one of the major challenges, really collective action. Uh, you know, Deborah said earlier uh, that you can have an action plan, but without really implementation, you know, it's just an idea. So what do you foresee as really the major challenge? We obviously know that um, the CAP program requires collective action among different agencies and the private sector, et cetera. What do you see as the major uh, issues uh, for implementing the plan? Um, for implementation, uh, you, uh, for implementation, I, I believe the, um, I think the uh, major issues will be uh, uh, to, uh, to have the, what you call a, a, a long, um, long breath or the, you have you have to, to when when you start something like this you have to to know that this is a is not a one year program it's not something that you do for once and you put it behind so <clears throat> if you have this attitude consistency that yeah. consistency and it's a, 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 a something that is continuous improvement uh, thing if uh, this is the, the the i think the the most important thing if all agencies, all government uh, know that this is, this is not only a one-time program, it's a, con uh, a continuous program, uh, the challenges will change, uh, they will not uh, fall like, uh, uh, they will not be discouraged if, if there come up uh, new challenges. Uh, this, I think this is the, the most important thing, is to have this attitude uh, about such a program. Okay, thank you. Uh, okay, Fahim, you want to go? Presenting to you the UAE's case study in the GFCC best uh, practice uh, publication on its trajectory of infrastructure development over the past several decades. Over the past four decades, since its founding in 1971, the UAE has propelled itself on the world stage as one of the most dynamic countries in the world. The critical success factor that enabled the UAE's economic development has been the strategic use of investments from oil capital. The country's visionary leadership has invested to create a world, both physical and social, that, is, that serves as a base 
for a country that is positioned to lead as a knowledge-based, innovation-led economy. In doing so, it has been able to navigate the challenge of being a hydrocarbon-based economy. It's uh, no news to you that innovation and competitiveness are closely related concepts, and the most uh, competitive countries are often the most innovative. And our case study today describes to you the investments in a nutshell, they're very high light, high level, um, that have been used uh, in infrastructure to spur economic growth, to attract talent, to develop talent in the country, and to raise the living standards of the people in the country and establish a foundation for the country to develop its human and innovative capacity. Am I uh, changing the slide? You can't do my presentation again. <laughs> So perhaps while we wait for the slides to come up, one of the things that, one of the quotes that struck me as so compelling and so profound is by the founding father, the, His Highness the late, late um, Sheikh uh, Zayed, who said, no matter how many buildings, foundations, schools, and hospitals we build, or how many bridges we raise, all of these are material entities. There we go. All of these are material entities. The real spirit behind progress is the human spirit, the able man with his intellect and capabilities. And I thought that was something so profound, and it struck me particularly because this is a consistent theme in the development of the UAE, that although world-class infrastructure is being built, they have never lost sight of the fact that it is really the human person and the prosperity is really the policy statements and directions are all around human prosperity. I'll turn it over now to Amna who will tell us more about that. Thank you so much, Aina. So um, in, in our case study, we have used the World, Economic, uh, the World Economic Forum Framework for Economic Development and Countries. We explore the UAE's the rapid development through the three stages. The first stage is the factor-driven uh, factor stage where economies are resource-based. So they, produced a primary, um, they produce primary products, meaning that countries in this phase, they have uh, for example, primary health care, primary education. And the second stage of investment is the efficiency-driven uh, stage where, econo where economy has become more sophisticated, where they use advanced solutions to produce advanced products. And the third, um, and the third stage, which is the innovation-driven stage, economies are based on innovation to produce more innovative products using knowledge-based economies and creativity. So for now, let's, let's see how did the UAE uh, transformed itself from ag agrarian uh, stage to, how did it transform itself from an agrarian stage to a knowledge-based uh, driven economy? So prior to the discovery of oil in the 50s, the region had a very limited resources where it was based on fishing, farming, pearl diving, and trading. And when the oil was discovered, it helped and it allowed the economy to accumulate the capital and savings, which helped in the, the, um, which helped in the, the start of the development of infrastructure. In the initial wave of investment, and in an effort to diversify the economy away, uh, away on an oil-based economy, the oil revenues were, uh, the oil revenues were um, invested in the world-class roads, ports, and airports. As we can see here, in the first stage, which is between the 1971 and 1990, we can see the infrastructure has developed itself where it had the primary, uh, primary institutions. We had ports, we had 
world leading uh, international airports. We have also an international airline, which is Emirates Airline. We have also the social infrastructure, which is um, uh, healthcare institutions, also the communication. Uh, it's great here to, to mention to you the, the story of one of our uh, very old uh, ports, which is Sheikh Rashid port, that, it ha um, that Sheikh Rashid, the ruler of Dubai, he was uh, the old president of Dubai, Allah yarhamah, his ambition is to turn Dubai into a major trade center. And as long as, a uh, long time ago, he realized a deep water port needed to achieve his ambition. Against his skepticism of foreign advisors, he forged into, um, uh, into creating a, a world-class port. They didn't believe that this could happen, but he believed in it and um, he, he wanted to do so. So uh, in several months, the project was, was uh, successful and it, the port was oversubscribed with many ships and huge vessels came and traded uh, in Dubai. And this, uh, this huge success has paved the way to a, another um, ambitious and another great success, which is the success of uh, Jabal Ali port, where Jabal Ali now has become and is one of the largest man-made uh, one of the largest man-made uh, harbors and one of the um, and one of the uh, and the sixth large container terminal in the region. And the second wave of investment. Now, in the second wave of investment, structure uh, stock was added to help diversify the economy and solidify UAE as a trading hub. A great example for this is the Dubai Mall. Dubai Mall is one of the largest uh, malls in the, uh, in the world. And it is also uh, describes an urban, uh, urban concentration where it not only focuses on retail, but it focuses also on, uh, on um, focuses also on um, hotels. It has hotels. It has clinics. It has also uh, parks. It's it's state of a, a, it's a residential area as well. Also, we can see the development of financial institutions where we have financial markets uh, markets in the country. We also see the development of education clusters where, uh, where we have today around 100, over 100 in education institutions in the country. We also uh, have um, uh, the, clean, the world leading clean energy uh, cluster, which is MASTAR. MASTAR is a multi-billion multi -billion dollar initiative. It's a UAE clean energy cluster that uh, is advancing the new energy goals of the country. Here, um, Mustar is a case study written by Harvard, and it was, it was claimed as a best practice for clean energy systems. Mustar Institute, it also has a Mustard Institution of Science and Technology that is developed in partnership with MIT. It also has a city that serves a test bed for in innovative technologies and a home to a clean energy companies. Now I will keep the floor. I will leave the floor for Shahina to uh, to uh, tell you and explain how did we go forward with these investments from the period 2010 and beyond. So Master Institute uh, laid the path, I guess, for um, a current wave of investments that seeks to leverage knowledge and innovation for enhanced competitiveness. It's not that there aren't investments in the other areas of retail, for example. There definitely are. However, there is a greater emphasis on knowledge-based infrastructure that will catalyze innovations. So, for example, we have in this phase 
Um, we have, for example, the expo that's coming up. We have a space agency. We have Shams One, which is among the largest concentrated solar power plants in the world. And I'd just like to double click on a couple of them. Um, the expo is a vivid case in point, which I think brings together the UAE's historical role in bringing innovative ideas and people together. The theme of the event is connecting minds and creating the future. The event will be hosted in 2020, and it will be the first such mega event in the, in, in the entire Manasa region. It is a tremendous um, it is a tremendous opportunity for the region. It is expected to bring in 25 million people. This will be the first expo where most of the visitors are international, not domestic. And it will create to the tune of 277,000 jobs regionally. So the impact will be huge. It will be a catalyst for national development. It, is going to, it has a sub-theme of sustainability, so it is focused around creating an expo and um, embracing challenges around sustainability. It also will have legacy institutions, possibly up to three uh, academic institutions that will be focused on different areas of sustainability. So the mega event is just a small part of a much deeper area of infrastructure that this is bringing in. And um, it really seeks to bring together the leading technologies in the world around sustainability. So I think that's something to look out for. In this vein of harnessing innovations, the UAE has articulated in 2014 a national innovation strategy. The national innovation strategy is a practical tool to get to the vision 2021, which seeks to make the UAE one of the most innovative countries by the Jubilee year 2021. And if I can just read to you from the vision, it says innovation, research, science and technology will form the pillars of a knowledge-based, highly productive and competitive economy driven by entrepreneurs in a business-friendly environment where public and private sectors form effective partnerships. So the innovation strategy, we, as we will see in a minute, is very tightly focused. It, uh, the national innovation strategy identifies seven priority sectors that will drive investments. And, in, and UAE's future growth and prosperity. These are already areas where it has a strategic advantage, and some of them are on the frontier. So we have, of course, renewable and clean energy, transportation, space, technology, education, health, and water. The UAE has also committed to increasing by threefold its investment in R&D from 0.5% to 1.5%. So this will also have significant uh, effects in shaping the economy. I'd just like to zoom in on a few investments. These are really just a small sample of things to give you a sense of what is going on in the country with infrastructure investments. Um, as Amna pointed out, we have, a, we have clusters of academic institutions. Today, the UAE has over 100 academic institutions and research facilities. This is significant. It also has the largest concentration of international schools anywhere in the world. This is also significant for attracting global talent, for building research communities, and for sharing that knowledge globally. So that, that, is a, that is an important part of the strategy. We see here also, I'm sorry, I don't have a pointer, but we see here, um, we see here a satellite, a UAE satellite agency has just recently launched for the first time a master's degree in space sciences. So this is an important move forward for, for the region. It's being done in conjunction with the Mustar Institute of Science and Technology and MIT. We have the wind turbines that you see. This is the London Array, which is a, an investment of Mustar. It will power half a million uh, homes in the UK, and it amounts to something like planting 1.5 million trees, and it will take a million tons of carbon dioxide out of the air every year. So this is another Im important infrastructure investment. Below it, we see the woman working. This is at Strata. It's uh, UAE's um, advanced m manufacturing plant for aerostructures. Next to it is the Shamswan um, solar plant, which is a 100 megawatt plant, which is a concentrated solar plant that is among the largest in the world. Uh, below it, uh, the gentleman from Attic. Attic is uh, uh, it wholly owns Global Foundries, which is the second largest uh, semiconductor foundry in the world. 
and this has important implications for research and development and the direction that the country will go in in terms of creating technology ecosystems. We have the Louvre, Abu Dhabi, so we're not forgetting the creative, the more human side, if you will, of creating new environments. And then we have Khalifa University, which is doing very impressive work in robotics today. These investments are positioning us in the complex global value chain and enhancing the UAE's competitive position. So we see here um, the partners across the world that bring together a 787. As Deborah pointed out this morning, that we are entering ever more complex chains, value chains, that we cannot any longer produce things by ourselves. And so this calls for important partnerships and it positions the UAE very well to, um, to be in these value chains. And again, here we have Strata, uh, UAE's advanced aerostructures manufacturing plant, where it is producing parts for the 777, the 787, Dreamliner, Airbus, and uh, Rolls-Royce. It's interesting to note that 60% of the technicians on the ground at Strata are women. So I just wanted to point that out. Yes, that's, it's really, and, and they're very highly trained technicians, and most of them from the Emirati population. Additionally, these are not just infrastructure investments, but the UAE, as a member of the global community, is, is uh, working hard to find solutions for global challenges and catalyzing innovations internationally. There are several very large awards, including, for example, the Million Dollar Drones for Good Award, using drones for social good. You have the Zayed Future Energy Prize, which is the world's largest prize in uh, uh, finding solutions for energy. It's a $4 million prize for various different categories. You have the now Artificial Intelligence Award, also for a million dollars. You have the recently launched Global Water Award. There is similarly an award for uh, promoting innovations in the private sector, and it's on and on. And if I'm not mistaken, these are among the largest awards of their kind in the world. So it's really a move to make sure that innovations are not just in buildings, but that there is concrete work being done to advance and further the objectives. Through its ambitious space program, the UAE plans a mission to Mars by 2021, the golden jubilee of the country, greatly deepening the culture of innovation. People sometimes ask about you know, the significance of a space program and why is that important, and I think it's hugely important. It's important for inspiring young children, for seeing what space programs can do. It builds a culture of science and technology, and it is hugely impactful, as it was in the United States, and as it will be in uh, the UAE, inshallah. Today, already the UAE ranks seventh in the world in terms of availability of scientists and engineers. And the country definitely plans to increase that. So, ladies and gentlemen, as it reaches for the stars, the UAE is embarking, is embarking on an exciting journey and articulating a new model of prosperity. I would like to close with a comment from, from the leadership that said, we have a vision and high aspirations. We do not anticipate the future. We build it. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, Shahina. Thank you, Amna. Thank you, Khaldun. Just one question because we have to really close and go uh, move on. Uh, what, uh, in your opinion, is, I mean, a lot of people are really in awe of the speedy development of, in the region in general and uh, the UAE in particular. What do you think is that secret sauce? Uh, that uh, you know distinguishes, if you like, or uh, has uh, helped in the development uh, of the UAE. Um, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Hatem. Uh, there are three main um, ingredients to this secret sauce. The first one is the unified vision of our leader, and their consistency and their passion about what they do. They uh, also, they're uh, the human capital. Building a world-class infrastructure, whether it was physical or social, human capital is an important ingredient and it's uh, behind the progress of UAE. Uh, the UAE will continue in attracting the brightest and the best minds to help in the journey uh, of success. Also is uh, the strategic investment, where as we can see that there is a major concentration on clusters where 
there is uh, a huge investment in the financial cluster, in the uh, education cluster, in the uh, healthcare cluster, and the uh, innovation-driven clusters, and the free zones clusters to attract uh, 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 business leaders to come and trade in the UAE. Thank you very much. I think okay. we're gonna. Sorry, we're gonna stop at that because uh, I see the out of time, uh, you know, clock here. So thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. It. Thank you. Thank you.